uh, how long have you uh, been a voice actor? Uh, at this point, about 32 years. I started when I was 15. 15? Yep. Wow. Well, what, did you, what was your first uh, voice acting job? Oh, I was a bored teenager in a suburb of Kansas City and uh, just thought it'd be fun to hear myself on, on television. It, it didn't occur to me anybody got paid for it. I, You know, I just was listening to the really bad local, you know, commercials that yeah. at that time and, and to to a great degree in small markets still are just done by the local disc jockeys, you know, on the radio stations. So they all tend to sort of sound the same, you know, the waterbed gallery, you know, they all... We're going down. Yeah. They kind of all sound like that, yeah. So, uh, and I knew I could do, uh, uh, you know, I did, I was always a good mimic, so I was good at doing different voices, and and I I just, I, I, you know, I grew up in the, watching the golden age of television uh, Mm -hmm. in reruns as a teenager, so I got to... uh, I would mimic what I heard on television, so I did a lot of dialects and a lot of stuff that I just didn't hear on the radio commercials and the TV commercials locally, and I knew I could do that. And, and like I said, it didn't occur to me anybody got paid to do that sort of thing. I just thought it'd be fun to, to hear myself and to do it, and and uh, so I started calling the local advertisers. Uh, and uh, of course, you know, back in those days, you had to use it like a Yellow Pages and find mm-hmm. them. And, uh, but the uh, and of course most of them were not terribly sympathetic to my uh, uh, blunt approach because you know I didn't I was a 15 year old I didn't have a whole lot of tact you know I was sort of basically saying yeah I heard your commercial and it really sucked and I can do better so needless to say they didn't respond real well uh, <laughs> but uh, one day I called the, the American Cancer Society because mm-hmm. they had seen I had seen one of their uh, PSAs for some fundraiser or something and it was really terrible mm-hmm. and. Uh, they assumed I was a professional voiceover guy. They, I got a call back very shortly from one of the largest ad agencies in Kansas City that had their account. Wow. And they were like, oh, yes, we, we, we would love to have a professional voiceover guy you know, <laughs> help us out. And, I, you know, of course, they, that kind of went right over my head. It didn't really yeah. register, you know. But So I had to have my dad drive me down to the session a couple of days later. And, of course, they walked up to my dad and started talking to him. And he's oh, that's like, funny. Oh. Yeah, he's like pointed at me, you know, this pimply face 15 year old with my fringy cut off jeans and stained t-shirt well your parents must have been like you know you must have entertained them doing your mimic of your voices oh and- well i entertained or or drove them insane i you know i'm one of those kids that today they probably have me drugged up to my eyeballs on ritalin have people recognize your voice you know if, if they've met you or yeah that, that that does occur fairly regularly where someone you know uh hears me say something and they'll kind of look at me funny you know and uh um, you know, it just it 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 doesn't happen daily, but it does happen once in a while. Besides from all the um, the narration of commercials and uh, stuff like that, you do you also do uh, cartoon shows, which I didn't know a lot of them that you did. I didn't know that you did Darwin from the Wild Thornberries. Yep, I did not I know that. And you were also Professor Utonium. Yes, and the Powerpuff Girls, Bubbles, I... Blossom, Buttercup. You can kick Mojo Jojo's butt tomorrow. Now it's time <laughs> to do your homework. Yeah. That's... See, uh, see that I, I I can't believe that because that's you know I watch those and I, oh sure and it's just amazing that you know you can do all those voices and so when you get a role like that how do you choose a voice for the character do you well uh, to some degree you don't I mean you know they give you a uh, they give you a, uh, a sketch of the character or drawing sometimes a full color rendering of of mm-hmm. their concept of what he'll, he or she, the character, or whatever, will look like. And uh, and then they, uh, and they'll give you a description. They'll say, you know, we, we think he should be like this. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's not, uh, it's not like they just, you just make it up completely on your own. They, uh, you know, they, they definitely have an opinion as to what they want, uh, you know, want the character to sound like. In the instance, for instance, of Mr. Harriman, Oh, on, yeah. uh Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. I mean, you know, just by his drawing and, and their description that, you know, he they they said right there, you know, we want uh, sort of a the stuffy, blustery British colonel. With the the monologue and every you know, just Yeah. So that was fairly simple to you know, they were uh, that's what they wanted. So, you know, uh, that's a fairly well established stereotype, you know, they good yeah. heavens, you know, the blustery British colonel, you see. <laughs> With every cartoon they that's what they do. They they show the voice actors sketches and uh, they give them a written description and then they uh, just listen to what people come up with and um, 
and that's where you know and then they then they just listen to the voices and pick the person they think matches the, their idea of the character the best now when i lived in los angeles i would go and, and record with the cast but even then only probably half or two-thirds of the shows recorded as a group mm-hmm. it depends on how many on-camera celebrities are involved because there's a lot of on-camera celebs that do voiceover and yeah. if they are involved um it's very difficult to get their schedules uh, to coincide. You know, they won't block out. Four, it takes about three hours to four hours to do one if you're doing it as a group. Mm-hmm. And you're not going to get a celebrity to sit anywhere for four hours. They they just want to come in, read their lines, and leave. Yeah. Um... So that's where the... Uh, so, you know, some... So if, there's, if they're on-camera celebs involved, then you don't read it as a group anyway. Oh, really? No, everyone just kind of comes in and does their own thing. Like when we did the Wild Thornberries, mm-hmm. uh, after the first few episodes where we just sort of got together to get to know each other and, and make sure we nailed the characters down, uh, we never recorded the as a group ever again. So they would pair us up. I mean, it, it would be you know, like when, when I did my stuff, me and they had, Lacey and I would read almost all the time together. Mm-hmm. And then they would have uh, Tim and... Uh, the woman that played the mom, they would read together, oh, okay. you know, so, uh, but yeah, we, no, we ran across each other and we'd, we'd go out occasionally and, you know, have a couple beers and it was a lot of fun. But uh, in terms of, you know, on a week to week basis, getting yeah. together, no, I think the guy that was the hardest to get together with was uh, 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 Michael Balzari, who was uh, Flea. Oh, really? Uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers. Yeah, from the band, yeah. Yeah, so he, because he was on tour a lot, so, but he, you know, his character was so... He didn't speak. He just made little funny noises, so he could come in and do a whole bunch at a time. Just do a bunch of funny, but do like like it's like pretty much like Taz. You do a bunch of exactly do a bunch of gargles and stuff like that. And there's your line. Right. When you get a, a a role, a voice acting role, and it's a character that that other people have done, other actors or other voice actors have done, and such like like said Yoda from the Clone Wars movie, or uh, different stuff like that. Do you feel like you have to get as close to the original voice as possible? Or? Well, you, well, you do. I mean, it's it, otherwise they won't hire you. I mean, yeah. they, when they when they're going for a, a voice match for an existing character, that's all they want is somebody who is as close as possible. Because you got pretty close to you. I'm pretty, I'm like that's that's Yoda right there. Yeah, I, I think you know. I mean, it's not. It's no nobody's ever going to perfectly mimic Frank Oz. I mean, it's you know he's he is what he is, and he's got a. A quality to his voice that's very difficult to exactly emulate. I mean, uh, you know, nobody that listens to any of the Muppet stuff today that that has people doing it is is, you know, I, I don't think anybody, you know, would 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 know that. Everybody knows they're close, but they're not yeah. they're not dead on, and I don't think they could be. I mean, the, it's, well, it's it takes like, six guys now to do what Mel Blanc did by himself. It's amazing how you know all those voices came out of one person, but. Um, well, they cheated a little bit. Like one of the things that no one realized uh, uh, is that, for instance, the voice of Sylvester mm-hmm. and the voice of Daffy Duck are the exact same voice. Oh, really? Uh, in the old days, what they would do is put a capstan over the uh, the rod on the reel-to-reel tape recorder to make it larger so that it would go faster. They didn't even have variable speed tape recorders back then, oh. so they would they would actually slip a, a, a thicker. Uh, a rod there so the tape would go a little faster and speed up the voice so if you listen to Sylvester Sylvester is down here his pitch is like suffer and suck well if you speed it up it's Daffy Duck it's the exact same thing it's just higher pitch and it's a little crazier oh, I mean the, char- the characters is. he shades the character a little differently obviously it's a little different personality but the voice itself is exactly the same it's, Sylvester is just down here and he's got that lisp and you speed it up and it's a little up here and it's Daffy Duck <laughs> It's the exact same voice. It's just that uh, the funny part is is that, that Joe Alasky, who does both of those voices today, yeah. did not know that growing up, of course, and, you know, oh, how really? could he? So he actually learned to do the voices differently. He he doesn't, they don't speed Joe up. He actually does two different voices. He, wow. he changes his voice so he does he does uh, them correctly. So it's just funny because, you know, even, that is funny. You know cause even Mel didn't do that, so... And you know, but like I said, you know, another one is from the Halloween movie H two O when you did the voice uh, of Donald uh, Pleasant who passed yeah. away. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, that was interesting. And I have to say, when I first saw that movie, and um, 
you know, I, I didn't know that you know that was you as a voice actor doing the, the voice. I actually thought that was the actor. That was probably one of the scariest parts of that movie was just hearing your narration over the pictures. Oh yeah, well that that's such a I, again, it's an iconic voice. You know, it's like mm-hmm. uh, you hear something like that or Yoda or you know, I did. Uh, I was honored to be picked by Stanley Kubrick to be HAL Nine Thousand uh, oh, yeah, before thought- he died. So that was uh, another thing that. You know, your your goal there is to try to come as close as possible. When you uh, narrate movie trailers, like I know you did uh, Wally and uh, uh, Ratatouille, and when you do uh, commercials or different shows, is there a certain way you will, you you do your voice for the different kind of genre that it is uh, a comedy? Oh, well, sure. I mean, you know, there's there's a there's a there's two elements to doing a, a successful uh, movie trailer voiceover. One of them is having the right voice, obviously. You know, if you if you sound like Sylvester, you're never going to get hired to do a, a movie trailer. <laughs> yeah. So they they want a certain sound, uh, you know, depending on the trailer. If it's a comedy, they'll want a certain sound. If it's a drama, they want a certain sound. You know, they, obviously most of the dramas and stuff, it all kind of harkens back to Don LaFontaine. They all kind of mm-hmm. want Don uh, that sort of sound. Um, you know, the inner world now. You know that kind of thing. But yeah. The, um, which I really don't do. I don't have that depth. Uh, you know that. The, the amazing pipes that uh, some of those guys have. Well, you, well, but, you do uh, change your voice because uh, you know what you sent, what your normal voice is, and what you hear when you do. Yeah, uh, well, that's tra- because it's all to me. It's all a put on. You know, most of the guys who do movie trailers, that's a, that actually is what they sound like to a great extent. I uh, mean, some some of them, you know, uh, I mean, they all change their voice a little bit and and put on a bit of a, a an artificial you know sound. Mm-hmm. Uh, even Don did, you know, his speaking voice was, st- it was still very clearly Don LaFontaine, but mm-hmm. obviously he, you know, he doesn't walk around going, good morning, you know, you yeah. know, he'll, he'll say good morning, you know, he's still got that rasp and the depth, but he doesn't go good morning, you know, I mean, yeah. so everybody, even the guys that sound that way naturally, they, they change their inflection, but most of them, their, their natural voices are pretty close to their speaking voices, uh, I mean, to their uh, trailer voices, that's not true with me. Uh, to me, it's all characters. Um, so mm-hmm. when someone says do a, a movie trailer, uh, I'm like, okay, well, which movie trailer guy, which character would fit this script? So if it's a comedy, you know, I, I, I either do, you know, I do a lot of stuff for Disney, Pixar, and uh, yeah. DreamWorks. I've got all the Madagascar stuff coming out. Now. Oh, that's it's, cool. So that all the new Madagascar 2, which is all very, um, you know, it's uh, it's DreamWorks Madagascar 2, starts Friday at theaters everywhere, which is, again, very much the, uh, you know, all your favorite Disney characters. Yeah, that guy. You know, so I, I, get, I do a lot of that stuff. and Or if it's a different kind of comedy, I'll do, you know, if it's like I'm doing some Jim Carrey stuff for a couple of projects he's got coming out. So that's a Oh, really? Voice. I'll do sort of a, you know, it's, it's this sort of voice, you know, starring Jim Carrey, Jack Black, and, you know, Cameron Diaz. You know, it's... Uh, Start Friday at theaters everywhere. That's a so it's a different kind of voice. But okay. to me, they're all as I say, they're just they're almost just different cartoon characters. You know, mm-hmm. it's just which one fits that uh, that script. Well, um, well, how many jobs do you, uh, of voice acting do you think you've had? You know, oh my gosh, uh, tens of thousands. I I, I stopped count. I, I I used to kind of keep a rough track of how many different jobs I'd done, and I stopped at about twenty thousand. I, I can't even wow. imagine at this point, and that was years ago. Um, of course, you know a lot of that. It, it it it's it sounds more impressive than it is, perhaps because you know when you do movie trailers and you do uh, television network promos. I mean, sometimes you'll do four or five a day just for that one movie. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. there there have been days. I think my record was uh, uh, last year during the um, uh, Wally campaign, mm-hmm. the Disney Pixar Wally. I think in one day I did. Uh, seven sessions for just that one movie and then right. I did four or five other recording sessions you know so in like one day I did 12 uh at least 12 different you know sessions in one day how many hours do you work uh more than I wish because <laughs> uh, the problem is is that I live now in the central time zone yeah but most of my clients are in LA two hours behind me so I pretty routinely work till seven o'clock at night uh, eight o'clock sometimes, but uh, the good news is I don't start till nine or ten in the morning. Mm. But I, I, I'm pretty much working uh, ten hours a day. You know, right. it, it's pretty pretty much seems to be the case. But I got a lot of kids to put through college, so I'll well, I'll, uh, I'll take it when I can get it. Well, I and I understand that. I just, well, that's the reason. Then I well, if you have, well, I guess you have fun doing it, though. I mean, oh, absolutely. You know, well, some of it's fun, some of it's not. I mean, you know, <laughs> like anything, it becomes work after a while, yeah. you know, I mean, uh, 
you know, it, it just depends on the, the job. Some are more fun than others. I mean, I, I had one that, you know, a couple months ago that was probably one of the worst sessions I've ever had. It just mm. went, it, it went on for hours and it was just nightmarish. I mean, they, they had me doing the voices of, um, it was a Burger King promotion that was happening in different countries around the world, but not the United States. Mm -hmm. And they were doing a tie-in with something to do with Star Trek. Oh, okay. um, But not the new Star Trek movie, the original series. Uh-oh. So they had these toys that were the original characters of the original Star Trek series, and they wanted them to talk. So they had me doing the they had me doing a voice of, of Shatner uh, for Captain Kirk and Spock and uh, Chekhov and and Scotty. Dang. Um, and I and I can do those to varying degrees of success. But mm -hmm. the, the twist was they wanted them in their native languages. So I was trying to do all those voices in German and in French and in Castilian Spanish and oh, that's in cool. in German. Well, it sounds cool. The problem is, is that you speak? Do you... they pro well, no, I, I I speak a little German oh, and a little okay. Spanish, but the uh, the uh, they needed it perfect. So they would have a translator on the line with me that was adjusting my Ooh. my pronunciations till it was perfect. The problem was, once you get it to the point where the pronunciation is perfect, it doesn't sound like Spock anymore. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm like, well, this doesn't sound anything, you know. There, I'm, I'm like, you know, especially Shatner. That's half of Shatner's. Read as his cadence. It's mm -hmm. you know, if it doesn't sound like Captain Kirk, it doesn't sound like William Shatner. And, that, I'm really and they're like, and it's hard to do that in in a foreign language because you can't do that and have it still be correct French. And so I tried to explain to them like, well, you have to make a choice. It either can be perfect French or it can be imperfect French that sounds like William Shatner. Which do you want? Well, and did. that was the problem. They just couldn't decide. Oh. You know, so I mean, I, it went on for, I was literally sweating. I'm just like going, this went on for hours and hours, and I just was Ooh. finally like, you know, guys, this is as good as it's going to get. You know, <laughs> and, if it, and if it's not going to, if this isn't good enough, you need to find someone else in your country that speaks German and sounds like William Shatner. But, because, mm. you know, it just, because the problem was is they just didn't know, you know, they didn't, they, 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 they hadn't thought really hadn't thought it through. Yeah. You know, it's like, uh, do we want someone that sounds like, uh, you know, I mean, imagine Scotty. I'm sitting there trying to do Scotty, <laughs> who has got a thick Scottish brogue, but in Spanish, oh. or in French, or in German. You know, so you've got a guy that says, Dr. McCoy, you come up a for nine or so blue. So, you know, it was, Herr Dr. McCoy. You know, du kannst nicht mehr ausgehen, mehr Wort neun, es gibt ein Ausgesplutten, you know, and it's like... That sounds like, that sounds German. Well, right, so, but it was like trying to come up with something that sounded like Scotty, but was German, you know, and it was fine, it was just, it was awful, it was awful, I will never do that again. When I started doing movie trailers, um, uh, it was probably 1988, I would guess, it was about 20 years ago, and when I started uh, 20 years ago, there were seriously five guys that did all of them it was it was don Hal, percy uh, well that was about it don Hal, percy uh and of course well the, the guy the disney guy and yeah um so yeah there were about five guys that did all the movie trailers for the entire industry so uh you know the fact that there's 20 now is is uh is, is actually a, a quite a quite an increase well, I re I I, uh, I recognize a lot of voices from a lot of guys that do uh, cartoon shows. Uh, from the guy that does a voice for Milo in the new uh, Disney cartoon movies, I, I've heard his voice in a couple of uh, like when you're watching Disney Nickelodeon, you hear his voice during the you know during the commercials, like this is what's coming up next and stuff well, like who that. Is, who is that? I can't think of his name. It's, it's probably James, Tom James Taylor. Or oh yeah, James Arnold Taylor. James yeah, Arnold Taylor. Yeah. Yeah, he's also uh, Obi Wan in. Uh, in uh, the new Clone Wars, oh yeah, he is. Series. And he's, uh, oh yeah, he's done a ton of stuff. He's right. He's James is excellent. He's one of the new generation of uh, cartoon guys. That's that's uh, really you know the top tier mm -hmm. of uh, of the profession. So uh, you know, there's a uh, he's he's excellent. To talk a little bit about the new Star Wars movie, since the the the, the Comic Con, the Fan Day Two is this uh, this weekend. How'd you get involved uh, in that in the movie? Well, I've been doing Yoda. I've been doing well Star Wars projects uh, for 15 years. I, 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 I was, or more even. I, I think I was on the very first 
game that the LucasArts ever made, you know, back when they were on these giant five-inch floppy disks, you mm-hmm. know. Um, the, uh, uh, you know, at first they were just hiring me to do just miscellaneous voices, you know, like yeah. uh, archaeologist number three or, you know, a TIE fighter pilot number two. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, you know, being being the kind of hams the voiceover people are, we... Uh, <laughs> You know, I, I was, and being a Star Wars fan, you know, I'm sitting there kind of freaking out a little bit. Oh, you know, this is cool. I'm working on a Star Wars project. This, yeah. You know, I'm actually working for, for a company with the word Lucas in it. You know, <laughs> that, that's pretty amazing. And, uh, is. and, uh, you know, and of course I'm sitting there reading a script one day and there's, uh, uh, something in there with, uh, uh I think it was, it was Yoda or C3PO. One of it. I was just joking around and they're like, I suddenly look, they're all looking at me through the glass and they're, kind of going hmm can you do that again and uh they you know recorded it and it turns out what i didn't know was that frank oz you know who had become a very successful director Mm -hmm. was like out of the country doing something he was directing a movie somewhere and and just there was no way he was going to take a break from being a director to you know do a, a yoda for a video game yeah you know and uh turns out you know they took my what i had just read and they played it for George, I guess, and they decided I was good enough, so suddenly I found myself as Yoda, which was sort well, of a stunning development. Man, that, that, I mean, growing up, you know, seeing the movies, you know, as a, as a, as a, as a kid and seeing Yoda, I mean, I guess you never imagined that one day oh, no, of you would not. be Yoda, kind no, of. No, I never, I still, you know, I still hear myself, you know, I went to see the movie in the theaters just like everyone else, you know, and and man, I just, I got to tell you, I sat there with a lump in my throat going, how did this happen to me? You know, it's, it's, uh, it, it's, you know, uh, for as long as it lasts, it is a dream come true. So now you also do C-3PO. I heard that on, uh, well, I do some, uh, you know, of course, Anthony is, is, is C-3PO and he's, he's still, uh, quite active in the, in, in doing that. It's just, it depends on, it depends on his schedule, and it depends on whether he wants to do the project. It depends on where he is versus where it is. You know whether mm-hmm. they, you know, so there's just all kinds of factors as to whether they use him or me. Um, you know, obviously, if they can get him to do it, uh, that's the ideal situation. And, and even from my point of view, I mean, I, you know, I'm a fan. I, I, I personally would rather hear Anthony Daniels. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, you know, if I'm sitting there watching uh, uh, something with my kids, I'd rather it be him than me, just from the point of view of a fan. Uh, I try, I, even I try to do a Yoda, and it don't come out good. I think the only thing I can do is a laugh for somewhat, and that's, <laughs> that's pretty much all I can do. Yes, Yoda, hard on the voice it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can, it's not one of those things you can do for hours at a time. I've, there have been a few times where I've uh, had to do Yoda for a video game, and one of them was very Yoda heavy, and they pulled out this stack of script Ooh. for Yoda and I'm like there's no way that we're going to get through all of that today it's like, very well, it's not that many lines and I said well it's not so much that it's that many lines it's just by the by the end of the uh, you know after a half hour or an hour of that it's not going to sound like Yoda anymore you know it's going to just get so uh, gargity and kind of like yeah, <laughs> it's just, well it just doesn't sound it's just, just starts sounding hoarse instead of character do you lose your voice often when you do different? Um... Not real. I mean, I've there have been a few times in my career. I mean, literally like three or four in the twenty years or thirty years I've been doing this, where I've worked so much that it I started messing. You know, started sounding terrible. Well, um, on your uh, your website, I saw a clip you had from the Today Show where they talked about how Hollywood actors now are being hired by major companies to do voice acting uh, for oh, their for com- Yeah, for commercials and stuff. Yes. And, uh, you know, and they mentioned names like, you know, Sean Connery and, you know, George Clooney and Gene Hackman, who I've heard Gene Hackman pretty much time every time I see a Lowe's commercial. Yeah, he's been doing that for a few years. I, uh, yeah, I, yeah, I was interviewed. I was actually on that show. I was on the Today Show. That, that was, I was one of the guys they were talking to on camera. Now, how do you, how do you, like, feel about that? How, because they also said well, they, that they're paying, they're paying you guys less and they're paying the movie guy actors? Or? Oh, far less. Oh gosh, yeah. I mean, uh, something that I would make uh, five thousand dollars off of, or maybe ten thousand dollars off of, they're paying those guys a uh, half a million. 
what would be a good step into getting into maybe uh, voice acting and everything? What, what, what's something you should do or not do? to? Well, uh, and if you're near a major market like Dallas or uh, Chicago or San Francisco or any of those, uh, there's, there's a, there, all major market cities have a voiceover business and community that does you know their stuff there locally. You know, every town has sort of the different echelons of voiceover work. The, the, uh, and again, I'm not trying to put it down. I'm just saying that that the 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 the, the, the lowest rung of voiceover work is, of course, just the stuff that the DJs do for free. Yeah. You know, a lot of the commercials you hear on the radio stations, they they just do those for free. It's part of the uh, part of what they get when they buy the time on the radio station. You know, so they're not they're uh, they're you know they're that that's not a, a lucrative way. You can't make a living doing those because the DJs are doing them for free. Yeah. And then above that, you get the local commercials where they actually hire local talent mm-hmm. um, to do, uh, you know, for the local ad agencies. And those, uh, obviously, is where you want to start. You you need to find out who does local ads. And in every community where there is a, a, a decent-sized local ad uh, business, there will be people that you know uh, that have recording studios that can help you put together a demo reel and and but nowadays with the internet, I mean, you can find people in Hollywood that'll help you put together a demo uh, CD. Oh, really? And you can do it over the internet. I mean, you know, they they'll send you copy and you send them reads and they'll give you critiques and they'll help you put it. You know, so I mean, it it that that's possible as well too nowadays. But you know, you need to put together something that sounds like. You know, a demo reel. The, I keep saying reel. It's not a reel anymore. It's a demo CD or <laughs> now a demo email, a demo MP3. Um, um, th- that you know that you can send out to the local people. So you know you need to find something that is is a, a kind of a new twist or something. You know, because if you, I mean, one of the things I get all the time is people will send me a reel saying they, you know, can you listen to my cartoon stuff and see what you think. And the whole demo is them trying to do Bugs Bunny and 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 uh, Yogi Bear and and uh, Tony the Tiger, and I'm like, well, do you think they're going to hire you to do that? They already have a Fred Flintstone. Yeah. They already have Bugs Bunny. They have, and you're not any better. You're certainly not better than the ones they have. So mm-hmm. they're going to listen to this and go, okay, why would I hire a guy who does a worse Bugs Bunny than? than Billy West, or why would I hire somebody that does a worse Sylvester than Joe Alasky? I'm not, you know, so there's no point in doing that. You know, you need to come up with something that they can demonstrate your talent without making it look like you're just trying to, you know, I don't know what, you know, take uh, someone else's job who they've already established, because there's no point in that. Come, come up with your own voices? Well, or... yeah, you know, again, it can be a stock character. It can be British, you know, the British butler. It just needs to be, you know, your British butler. And forget that. Well, I, I actually have to run. I've got to. Get, I'm supposed to be on mic five minutes ago. So oh, if you, okay, can you well, do more? We can do more of this later if you need to, or if, uh, if not, it's been a wonderful time chatting with you, and I'll, I'll see you at the uh, fan days this weekend. We'll see you at fan day. You got it. Thank you. Thank you.